Corporate finance practice problem using OneNote. Net present value NPV versus payback period. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, you're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon left-hand side. We're down here in the practice problems, then down in the 1220 net present value NPV versus payback period tab. Also note when using OneNote, take a look at the immersive reader. Many of our presentations up top will be mirrored down here in the text area. Same name, same number, transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing out the tab up top, we have our information up top. We're going to go through the calculations then on down below. We're doing a comparison this time between the net present value and the payback period. The net present value being the new thing we're going to be putting into place. The net present value being the one, the calculation, when you're doing a projection of these sorts that is the one that's probably most relied on because it uses the present value of money that and the internal rate of return calculation which we'll take a look at in a future presentation so when we look at the payback period we'll do that first because we've seen that in prior presentations i'll go through that a little bit more quickly oftentimes in a book problem you would expect then these two things maybe to have different results and then the present value of money one being the one that you would rely on more this one i think it's going to support each other so both of them come out to the same result which is actually what you would expect more often in practice because the two results are geared to see the best project but you know you want to emphasize those differences as well when you're thinking about book problems so the main difference between the two of them payback period doesn't give you basically even the net income on it it only tells you when you get your money back and it doesn't take into account time value of money net present value takes into account the time value of money uses a discount kind of rate to do that and therefore is typically thought to be a more superior or whole encompassing model although doing both calculations would be useful when you're trying to get a glimpse into the future and oftentimes they will complement each other with regards to the results as i believe they will in this practice problem so we have the investment we're going to say of the 68,000. we have the cash flows then down below for three years we have the investment x and the investment y same kind of scenario this will work for an investment this is going to work for if you're putting money down for equipment or buying inventory or putting money down for a project where you expect that then to have a yield a return in the future and you're trying to see whether or not it be worthwhile to put that money down to make that decision making process as you do so you think about the opportunity cost of the second best decision you could put money into or other projects which could give you a similar return to measure whether or not this return would be worthwhile we'll start with the payback period and then go to the net present value payback period of x and y 50,020 and then 25 if we were to add those up 50 plus 20 plus 25 minus the 68 means we have the income of the 27 the second project 46 19 and 30 income of 95 over the three years minus the 68 we have once again the 27 net result this will not always be the case that this is the net result and we will not always have the case where it will be the same investment period here or the same kind of uh, ex amount of years that will be involved but uh, if they are more similar then it can be more difficult for us to basically just see right off the bat which one might be better so if you're comparing things that are of different lengths you can do that as well we'll probably have practice problems like that in the future so let's do our then we have the discount rate which will be applicable when we do the present value calculation we will think about shortly so i'll do this one a little bit more quickly because we've seen the payback before we're going to say we put the 68 down. When do we get our money back? When do we get paid back? That's the question. So we have the 68,000 minus the 50,000 that we're going to get in year one. We have 18,000 after that that we still have not been paid back. In year two, then, we're going to get another 20,000, so minus 20,000. Now it flipped to being negative, which means we got our money back at that point in time. And we have income. Everything past that point is income. Income of the 2,000 income at the end of the day of the 27,000. So we got paid back sometime between uh, year one and year two. What's the fraction of the year? We're going to take what's left after the year, right before we got paid back, 18, divided by the amount of money we're going to get in the following year, 20. Calculation looking something like this, 18 divided by 20, 18 
over 20. I'll leave the zeros off this time. 9.9. So we're looking then, this is where we're looking. We're looking 1.9. Remember that that 0.9 could be represented in days. 0.9 times 360. Let's do that. We got the 0.9 times 360 would be like 324 days. Or in months, 12 times 0.9 would be like 10.8 months. Then if we do the second one, we're going to take a look at the same 68 payback period. Payback period calculation. 68 put down. When are we going to get payback? When are we going to get our money back? In the Y scenario. Well, if we take that 68,000 minus the 46,000, we're going to say that we have 22,000 still not yet paid back. And then in year two, we got 19,000. So 19,000, so 22 still not paid back, not minus the 19,000 leaves us with 3,000. And then finally, we're going to get paid back, I hope, in the last year, minus the 30,000. There's our 70, 27,000 profit, our focus in on. It's going to be somewhere between two and three that we get paid back. What's the fraction of a year? We're going to take that 3,000 we still had left after the two years, divided by the 30,000. Here's the fraction calculation we got the 3000 over the 30 3 over 30 is going to give us our 0.1 so this one we're looking 2.1 we got paid back in two years 2.1 years versus up here we got paid back in the uh, 1.9 years and we'd rather get paid back sooner so it looks like here we're talking x is the best one x is winning with regards to the payback period but we're not just going to rely on the payback period because that doesn't take in the time value of money. So let's go down and do the new thing, new stuff happening now. This is going to be the time value of money calculation. Same scenario for X and Y. Now we need the discount rate. This is going to be the critical rate. 12% represents the discount rate. We want to basically have a rate that we're going to clear. You, you might call this the, uh, the discount rate, the cost of capital rate. You might call it the hurdle rate sometimes it's called the required rate of return so that represents both the interest that you can think of but not just interest it represents kind of the opportunity cost of where we can put our money elsewhere and what we think is going to be an appropriate return to get on it so we want a 12 percent return if it's less than 12 percent we don't want to take the project typically if it's over 12 percent then typically we might take the project because we're getting our rate of return in here in other words when we do this calculation, if we come out to zero, your instincts will say, hey, I didn't get I didn't earn any money once I take it back to the current period. That's not the case because this includes the amount of return we want. So if we get to zero, that means we earned the proper return. We earned the 12 percent return in on it. So anything above zero once we do this calculation is good. We want it typically if this is going to be our, the, our threshold that we want to clear anything that's under the 12 percent we're not going to take because we assume the opportunity cost of our money means that we can put our money somewhere else and get the 12 percent return so we're only going to accept projects that are over the 12 percent return also note that when you're using this method you might be in a situation where the company has enough money to invest in multiple projects but they want to make sure they're legit good projects so they might accept multiple projects that are over the hurdle rate the threshold rate here or you might be in a situation where they're trying to compare two projects and they only have the 68,000, for example, to put in one or the other. Then the question would be, does this clear the rate of return we want? And if it does, you know, which one would be better, project one or project two? All right, keeping that in mind, let's let's do this one. So all we're going to do is present value the, the calculations. I'm going to assume like Excel to calculate these present value type of calculations. You could notice what we have here is a stream of payments. You can think about this as a stream of payments. In period zero, we paid 68000 That's the outflow. Then we have an inflow a year later, 50000 then 20000 then 25000 We can take all these back to the current period using the discount rate of the 12% using present value of one calculations. Note that if all these numbers were the same, then you could use an annuity calculation but that's often not the case with these kind of calculations. So these are often done in Excel. So I'm not going to do like the whole calculation with the tables and the calculation with the um, with with the tables and other and just the mathematical formulas. 
because we're going to do a lot of present value of one calculation. So typically you would want something like a financial calculator at least or Excel typically to, to do these calculations, but you want to understand them conceptually. So when you put this into place, you're going to, you're going to list out basically the payments, the years, including year zero, and then list your series of payments, which will include the outflow, which I'm going to represent as a negative number. And then we're just going to list out our payments here, 50, 20, 25. So we have the 50, 20, 25, that adds up to the 27,000 that we had up top. That would be the net in the net flow the the sales or the net received the net income in essence <laughs> of this cash flow if we didn't take into consideration time value of money then adding time value of money calculations would look something like this for example this first one note that this one doesn't have any difference because it's at time period zero if we were putting this into excel we might still do the time value of money calculations just so we can copy it down and have a uniform calculation in all these columns and it would look something like this negative present value in uh, 12 which is going to be the rate the rate is going to be then the discount rate that 12 percent comma number of periods which is going to be zero note if you're putting this into a table in excel it's very useful to have this column over here with your periods as simply numbers of years out so that you can basically use them in your formula and reference to them and allow you to then copy the cells down so if you want to learn more about that, we do do this in Excel. So you can check it out there as well. And then comma, comma, because it's not an annuity, future value is going to be the 68,000. Because we're in period zero, we get to the same result. Let's do another one. If we took this 50,000 and, and worked that one out, negative present value, the rate is going to be that 12%, comma. We got the number of periods, which this time would be one, because this is one year out. So that 50,000 is being pulled back. And then we have comma, comma, future value is going to be that 50,000. So if we pull that 50,000 back to the current period at the 12% discount rate, which isn't just like the interest rate, that's, that's our opportunity cost in, in there. We've included what we want in basically the profit in that 12%. That's our rate of return. That's our required rate of return. That's our hurdle rate, you can call it. So that's going to be 44,643. Then we have the 20,000. If we did the same process here, would result after two years out. Notice it's two years out. If you copied this cell reference down, it would then copy down properly due to the, due to the absolute reference and the fact that we have our, our items over here. We're not hard coding the years, allowing us to copy this down a lot more easily. And then the 25,000, if we bring that back down to the present, it's 17,795. And then if we sum up this outer column now, the 68 outflow minus the inflows, then we come up with a net inflow of the 10,381, 10,381. Now, the fact that this is positive means anything positive. If it was one, that would mean that we would have cleared the 12% rate of return. We would have cleared the hurdle rate. So the fact that that's positive means that we're likely, we, we think this is a good project, one that we can, can consider. So if that was all we were asking and we can accept as many projects as we want, as long as we're getting a 12% or over return, we could stop there. But here we might ask the question, of course, well, is that going to be better or worse than project Y? Let's try project Y, do the same kind of thing. We would, we would say, okay, let's set up our table from period zero to period three, and then just list out the same payments, 46, 19, 30. We're just listing the same data. If we add that up, we come up to 27,000. Then we'll present value each period in a similar fashion. So we've got uh, period 0, 68,000. We're going to present value it. The rate is going to be that 12% again, comma, number of periods is going to be 0, comma, comma. And then the future value is the 68,000. This first payment at period 0 is the same. Second one, 46,000, negative present value rate, 12%, comma, the number of periods is now one, one period out, comma, uh, and then comma, comma, future value 46,000, that 46,000 is now present valued to 4171. If we did the same with the 19, two years out, bringing it back two years, it's present valued at the 15147. If we did the same for the third one, present valuing it to 21,353, summing up the outer column, the negative number plus the inflows, outflow plus the inflow, we get to the 9,572. 
Once again, it being positive, therefore, if we're looking for something that just clears the hurdle rate, clears the 12%, anything over zero, even if it was one, would have meant that we have the required return in the calculation. If it were negative, we wouldn't get 12% return, and that's when we would reject it if the 12% is our required rate of return. So in that sense, you would, cal you would pick both projects possibly. But what if you just want to pick one or the other, which would be better? Well, here clearly the higher number would be better. So note here we're saying this one comes out to a higher number and therefore it would be better. That means that we're getting more than a 12% return. The fact that we have a positive number means we're getting more than a 12% return. The fact that it's higher means that we're getting a bigger return than the other project was uh, it does, we don't know, however, exactly what the rate of return is on a percentage basis. And we'll talk about that more. That's called the internal rate of return. So we'll talk about how to find the internal rate of return later. But you'll note this one came to the same thing. It reinforced itself. We said that we would want to be choosing the first project here, which was project X. We came to the same result when we did the payback period. And in practice, that's often actually the case, right? In practice, if you had two series of payments, that uh, that have the same amount and the same starting point the payback period you'd probably get paid back sooner if you got paid back sooner in the in the series of payments meaning the payback period would be better and on a present value kind of system you'd probably have a better present value if you if you got paid back sooner right because the time value of money if you got paid sooner it would be the case that you could think of scenarios and put together scenarios however when that wouldn't be the case, even with the same amount of payments, book problems may often do that to emphasize the problem with the payback period. And if you had different kind of calculations with a different amount of investment for multiple projects and different amounts of the periods that would be paid back, that could muddy things up a lot and make things a lot less clear. The less clear things are, the less uniform the things that we're looking at are, the more valuable time value of money calculations will typically be time value of money calculations being the net present value calculation and the internal rate of return.